Okay, gang. I think it's time for another field trip. I think that we should go to the backyard of Gunnery Sergeant Morpheus Mentum. I have a sneaking suspicion that something related to physics is going on back there. Let's check it out. Private Stevie, I know you are short. Do you expect me to believe that you can't insert this straight pole in the pool water without bending it? Yes. Insert the pole. No, that's not right. Look, it's bent. Take it out. Give me another push-up. All right. Try it again. Get it right this time. Insert the pole in the water. No, it's still bent. Give me another push-up. All right, now I'm going to let you try that a couple times on your own. Remember, it's not right until it's straight. What Private Stevie doesn't know is that no matter how many times he dips the pole into the water, it will appear bent. That's because light is being bent by something called refraction. <laughs> I love physics. Oh, that's not right. Give me another push-up. Well, obviously, Gunny has found a way to put refraction to good use. But what is refraction and what are its characteristics? Well, let's do a simple demonstration. And this is kind of analogous to what Gunny was doing with the pole. We saw that as the pole went down in the water, it appeared to bend away from its straight line uh, direction. And, and, uh, and why is that? Well, let me just illustrate this. I have my massive glass cylinder of science and I have my bowling ball of science and I'm just gonna dip it in here and I want you to watch the effect when I submerge the bowling ball in the water. Can you see that the bowling ball appears to be much larger under the water than above the water? What's happening here is something called refraction and refraction occurs going from one medium to another, and it specifically deals with bending light. What's happening right now is light from the room is hitting this bowling ball from all directions and bouncing through the water, through the glass, into the air. Now, if you would imagine a vertical line down the center, we're going to call that a normal line, and it's pointing out towards you. The light is bouncing off the bowling ball and coming back through the water. It's actually, instead of going out parallel to the normal, it's actually bending away from that normal. So what's happening is as the light goes from the water, which is a more dense medium, and the glass is also a more dense medium, it bends as it goes through those mediums and comes out into the less optically dense medium. And that's why the object appears larger. It's the same reason why the pole in the water appeared a little bit larger and was actually bent. It's because of how the light changes direction, going from one medium to another. Now, what I have here is a light source emitting a beam of white light across my whiteboard. And as you can see, the tendency of the light is to travel in a straight direction through the air, which is the medium in front of my whiteboard. Now, what I have here is a little smoke prism and I'm going to illustrate the first key concept that you need to understand about this. And that is what happens when the light comes in at a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the boundary between, in this case, what will be air and what will be the prism. All right, Because the prism is more optically dense. In other words, light slows down in the prism more than it does in the air. So I will move this in so that the light is kind of in impinging on here at a 90 degree angle. You see that? Now, do you see any bending happening? Refraction? No. At a 90 degree angle, the wave of light actually passes through the prism without refraction occurring. It's very important that you understand this key concept. Now, let's play around a little bit. What happens if I change the angle between that ray of light and 
let's call this a, it's coming in what we call normal or perpendicular to the surface. Let's change the angle a little bit. You can see a couple of things happening. Can you see that there's a little reflected ray here? Obviously, if I drew a line here perpendicular to the surface, that's my new normal line. It's perpendicular to this boundary here. And what we see is we can kind of see that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, because this is where the white light's coming out, are the same. And this is the law of reflection. So reflection is happening at the boundary. And this is true for all different types of waves when a wave goes from one medium to another. Not only that, more importantly, I think you can see that the direction of the wave is changing inside of the prism. Can you see that it's actually being deflected down? All right, so what's happening is as light travels from less dense, the air, into the more dense prism, it's actually changing direction. It's slowing down, it's changing direction. Now, if you were to look at, if I could draw just a little dot, a little line on here to kind of represent a normal to the surface on the inside of the prism, can you see that from the original straight line path of the light, which was up here, that the ray has been bent down towards that normal line? That is the second key concept that you need to really understand, is that when you go from less dense to more dense, that light gets bent or refracted towards the normal to where that boundary is, where the interface is. Okay? Now, if you go over to this side, let me just move it up a little bit so it's easier to see. If you move over to this side now, you can see that the straight line, excuse me, you can see that the straight line direction of the light should be down around in this area, but what's happened now is that as the light goes from more dense to the less dense air again, it actually bends away from that normal line. So when you go from more dense to less optically dense, the ray of light will bend away and it'll speed up. It's important for us to notice one more thing. I'm going to put it in at an angle again. And again, you still have the reflection and the refraction through. But notice something about the direction of the light going into the prism compared to the direction of the light coming out of the prism. Can you see that they're parallel? The reason for that is because the light ray going out of the more dense to less dense bends the light the same amount as the same amount as it did coming in. So we refer to this as parallelism of light. So that if I go in one side of a more optically dense and come out, the light will be parallel to its original direction of travel.